Nama Om Vishnu Pudaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Guruvani Pracharine Nirve Se Sasunyavadi Paskati Dizitarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Bhaguni Chananda Sri Vaita Gdata Sri Vasudi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Rama, Jai Jai Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada, Jai Vaitikara, Sivasati Guru Bhakti Vrindam. Hare Krishna, so today... I have received homework from Agastya and Shishta and Sanmuk. And I don't think I received anybody else's homework. I'll just double check. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So, I think we'll start with Shishta today. And she's written a really super excellent. Um, uh, answer to her homework. Okay, stress this homework. Sorry. So, the assignment. Read the text and purport of Bhagavad Gita 5.7 carefully, and then write an essay about your ideal life, and about uh, what would be your ideal life. As a part of your essay, answer the following questions. What is, what is your life's goal? How are you going to achieve your goal? What will you actually achieve in the end? Okay. So, Shrestha writes, Before becoming exposed to Krishna consciousness, I was vague about my goal in life, what I wanted to become, and what I needed to do. After practicing Krishna consciousness for the last few years, I've had the chance to understand what real success is and what an ideal life means, something which most materialistic people still grapple with. Here are a few crucial points that I have learned from Krishna consciousness that give the complete picture of the entire creation, its purpose, and my purpose, as an individual soul. Okay, very good. So there's a schematic, there's a, there's a, uh, um, a two-columned, uh, what you would call outline of, on one side, points, uh, that she has learned about life and, and on the other side a scriptural reference that supports her point that she learned. Okay, so let's see. 
So, she says, here are a few crucial points that I have learned from Krishna consciousness that give the complete picture of the entire creation, its purpose, and my purpose as an individual soul. Okay. Point one. Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the cause of all causes who had no beginning and no who has no beginning and no end. Okay. And her reference, Brahma Sita, Samhita, fifth chapter, verse number one. Krishna is known as Govinda, is the Supreme Godhead. He has an eternal, blissful, spiritual body. He is the origin of all. He has no other origin. And he is the prime cause of all causes. Okay, that's Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchitananda Vigraha. And Adi Govinda Sarvakarana Kananam. So... This is point one that she has learned, that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is the cause of all causes, and everything is coming from him. Good. Point two, both the spiritual and material energies come from Lord Krishna. So if everything comes from him, both the material and spiritual energies, and the spirit, spiritual world and the material world, everything is coming from him. And then her reference is Bhagavad Gita 7.6. All created beings have their source in these two natures of all that is material and all that is spiritual in this world. Know for certain that I am both the origin and the dissolution. So that is, Bhutani Sarvani Ham Krishna Shijagata Prabhava Pralaya Stata 7 Six. Yes. So everything that exists is a product of matter and spirit. Good. Then, that's that's point two. Both spiritual and material energies come from Lord Krishna. And point three. By becoming attracted to Maya, and becoming envious of the Lord. We living be entities became, become conditioned and fall into this material world. Conditioned by the three modes of material nature. Okay, so first Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. And second is, he's the source of everything spiritual and material. And number three, the living entity, who is also eternal. Actually, you should have put... Uh, uh, you should have put... Uh, that the living entity is the eternal part and parcel of Krishna and is endowed with limited free will. And then number four, which is your number three, should, could be by becoming attracted to Maya and becoming envious of the Lord, in other words, by a bad choice of free will, we living entities become conditioned to fall into this material world. And your reference is the Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya 20.117. This is a quote from a Prima Vivarta by Jagannanda Prabhu, and it says, Forgetting Krishna, the living entity, has been attracted by the external feature from time immemorial. Therefore, the illusory energy Maya gives him all kinds of misery in his material existence. So this becoming attracted by... Uh, the external feature that uh, or Maya that's that's something that's that happened originally that's why we're in the material world and it's continuing to happen now let's see when you let's say when you see a new Tesla car or you see a new uh, Apple uh, phone or you see some new clothes, or you see uh, a new place that you didn't know about to have a vacation, or you see a new type of sense gratification that everyone is engaged in. So all those things, many of them nowadays based on digital technology, attract us by their dazzling, glittering promise of sense gratification. And that is the influence of Maya. That's, That's how Maya acts. She, she, she and and uh, this is an interesting purport. 
in the Srimad Bhagavatam that uh, you can read. It's the uh, first canto, 15th chapter, 8th verse. And it's about a demon main name in the purport. Prabhupada talks about Maya Dhanava, who's a demon. But a very highly intelligent demon who is expert at making amazing architectural uh, buildings and designs. So Prabhupada says, the demons possess wonderful and supernatural powers to create material wonders, but they are always disturbing elements of the society. The modern demons are the harmful material scientists who create some material wonders for disturbance in the society. This is Canto 1, Chapter 15, Verse Number 8. For example, the creation of nuclear weapons has caused some panic in human society. Maya was also a materialist like that. And he knew the art of creating such wonderful things. And yet Lord Krishna wanted to kill him when he was chased both by the fire and by the wheel of Lord Krishna. Maya took shelter. Maya Dhanava, who's a male, it's not Maya the female, took shelter of such a devotee as Arjuna. So this Maya Dhanava was being chased by Krishna's uh, Sarasana Chakra and fire. Krishna wanted to kill him. He takes shelter of Arjuna. And Arjuna saved him from the wrath of the fire and of Lord Sri Krishna. Devotees are therefore more merciful than the Lord. And in devotional service, the mercy of a devotee is more valuable than the mercy of the Lord. Interesting. Both the fire and the Lord ceased from chasing the demon as soon as both of them saw uh, ceased from chasing the demon as soon as both of them saw that the demon was giving given shelter by such a devotee as Arjuna. So by taking shelter of Arjuna and Arjuna being merciful to this demon, the Sudarsan Chakra stopped. And Krishna stopped from trying to kill him. This demon, feeling obliged to Arjuna, wanted to do him some service to show his gratefulness, but Arjuna declined to accept anything from him in exchange. So Arjuna refuses to accept any favor from this demon who is an expert in science and knows how to make incredible things. Lord Krishna, Lord Sri Krishna, however, being pleased with Maya for his taking shelter of a devotee, asked him to render service unto King Yudhisthira by building a wonderful assembly house. The process is that by the grace of the devotee, the mercy of the Lord is obtained, and by the mercy of the devotee, a chance to serve the Lord's devotee is obtained. The club of Bhima Sena was also a gift of Maya Dhanava. Okay, so you see that demons often possess supernatural powers to create material gadgets that are very, very appealing to people. But in the end, it's just the, their gadgets and their creations, although they seem amazing, they just create disturbances in society. And Prabhupada says, the modern demons are the harmful material scientists who create some material wonders for disturbance in the society. Disturbance. What is disturbance? It's things that take your mind away from Krishna. That's what a disturbance is. So what did we learn last week and weeks before? Anything that takes your mind away from Krishna is maya. Yes, Daniel, is there something? Okay. Okay, so let's go back to Shrestha's homework. So one small correction is uh, point three should be 
uh, about the living entity uh, having free will, limited free will. Mamaivam sa jiva loka, jiva buddha sanatana, you can quote 15.7. Okay. And then point four is this verse by Jagannanda, Krishna Bhulya Jeev Bhagavan Shakari. And then Pasate Maya Tare Japati Dai. Which means that forgetting Krishna, the living entity has been attracted by the external feature of time from time immemorial. Therefore, the illusory energy, Maya, gives him all kinds of misery in his material existence. So as soon as we're attracted by the glittering, uh, let's say, the glittering uh, attraction of Maya in the form of different gadgets, Teslas and... and uh, iPhones and, and big screen televisions and this and that, then we get captured by Maya and our mind and our life's activities are taken away from Krishna consciousness and wasted on pursuing sense gratification. Okay, so next point is as conditioned living entities who are under the influence of the laws of karma we go through many births and deaths. Okay, once Maya catches us, then we go through many births and deaths. Chasing after sense gratification. And then her quote is, Shema Bhagavatam 426.8, which we've studied before, and it says, I think, otherwise a person who acts whimsically falls down due to false prestige. Thus, he becomes involved in the laws of nature which are composed of the three qualities, goodness, passion, and ignorance. In this way, a living entity becomes devoid of his real intelligence and becomes perpetually lost in the cycle of birth and death. Thus, he goes up and down from a microbe and stool to a high position in the Brahma Loka planet. Okay, so that's what happens when we get caught by Maya being attracted by material gadgets and buildings and houses and all kinds of dazzling digital technology we forget krishna and we begin to we're controlled by the three modes of material nature and then we go up and down in the eight million four hundred thousand species of life suffering from a microbe in stool to a high position in the brahma loka planet that's Srimad Bhagavatam 4.26.8. Then the next verse, the next point, life in the material world causes us much distress and, hap and some happiness, which are temporary and illusory. And her reference is Bhagavad Gita 2.14, O son of Kunti, the non-permanent appearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance in due course are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons, they arise from sense perception of Skalyana Bharata, and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. Mataks, so, uh, yeah, this is an important verse. Um, uh, and it says, uh, Yes, matras parasas to conte asitos nasukuduka to haga ma paianon it is times to success for barata. Good. Then, next point, Shastra has learned, Shastra has learned, escaping this miserable life is only possible by transcending the modes of material nature and becoming situated in Krishna consciousness. And the reference is 1420 when the embodied being is able to transcend these three modes associated with the material body, he can become free from birth, death, old age, and, and their distresses 
and can enjoy nectar even in this life. Yes. No. So, Mamai Vamsa Jeeva Luta. No, that's not that verse either. Uh, <coughs> 1420. Let's take a look at that verse. And it says. Mamai. Uh, let's see what it says. Very important verse. Mam chayo vi bicharin bhakti yoga na sevate sagunam samatityai tam brambuyaya kalpate. One who engages in full devotional service, unfailing in all circumstances, at once transcends the modes of material nature. I'm sorry. So you said verse 1420. That's what confused me. Let's see. 1420 says. Gunameta matitya chen dehi deha samud bhavan janamitya jaravya de vimukto amritamasnute. Yes, so 1420 says, when the embodied being is able to transcend these three modes associated with the material body, he can become free from birth, death, old age, and their distresses, and can enjoy nectar even in this life. Okay, sorry I made a mistake on that verse. It's a very important verse. Uh, and so uh, transcending the influence of the modes of material nature is absolutely necessary in order to become situated in Krishna consciousness. Okay, so I would say there's one thing that's missing here, and I don't think Shrestha mentions it later on either. No. So the, the essential thing is you have to accept a bona fide spiritual master. Without the help of the spiritual master, it's impossible to get situated in pure devotional service so that you can transcend the influence of the modes of material nature. Uh, or as it says in in 1426, one who engages in full devotional service, unfailing in all circumstances, at once transcends the modes of material nature and, and thus comes to the level of Brahman. So it's coming to the level of Brahman where there's no more sochati and kankshati, lamentation and material hankering that one becomes free of the modes of material nature, and then samaksarve sabhute, so developing uh, this vision of equality of all living entities and neutrality, not being disturbed by anything material, that one actually is situated firmly above the modes of material nature. And at that point, one, can, one is free to engage in devotional service. So there's a couple of suggestions there. And then her next point, she says, there are many yogas, karma, yoga, jnana yoga, jnana yoga, to reach the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But the fastest and highest form of yoga is bhakti yoga, which translates to unalloyed devotional service unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Very good. So this is 647. Yogi nama pisarve samad gatanantaratmana. Shadavan Bajate Yomam Same Yukta Tamomatak of all yogis, the one with great faith who always abides in me, thinks of me within himself, and renders transcendental loving service to me. He is the most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all. That is my opinion. So very good, Shrista. And then her next point by sincerely practicing bhakti yoga. One can escape the clutches of the modes of material nature and thus enter a liberated stage even while in the material world. And she quotes Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya 24.129 and 130. And she quotes the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Nectar of Devotion, 
1.2.187 from the purport of Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila, chapter 8, verse 139. And she says, There are many people who are liberated even in this lifetime. Some are liberated by discharging devotional service and others are liberated through the philosophical speculative process. Those who are liberated by devotional service become more and more attached, uh, attracted by the transcendental qualities of Krishna. Thus, they engage in a service. Those who are liberated by the speculative process eventually fall down again due to offensive activity. And why would they be offensive? Because they don't understand Krishna correctly. They have incomplete knowledge of the Lord. Okay, interesting. So pure devotional service is the only way. And then you can quote also So that's the 18th chapter verse 54 which says it's only by pure devotional service uh, that's a, I'm sorry 1855 one can understand me as I am as the supreme person I got it only by devotional service and when one is in full consciousness of me by such devotion he can enter into the kingdom of God very important verse but that's almost the same thing is said in the verses in the verse that uh, verses that Shrestha uh, cited. Okay, then the next point she learned by being in Krishna consciousness: the constitutional position of living at the is to serve the Lord with devotion. And she quotes Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhyalila twenty one o eight. And 109, it is the living entity's constitutional position to be an eternal servant of Krishna because he is the marginal energy of, of Krishna and a manifestation simultaneously of one with and different from the Lord, like a molecular particle of sunshine or fire. Krishna has three varieties of energy. So, okay, he has internal energy, the marginal energy, which are the living entities like us, and the external energy. All are part and parcel of him. So because we, as marginal, as the marginal energy of the Lord, marginal means we can go either way, either go back to Godhead or stay in the material world d due to our eternal soul and our limited f free will. Um, if we want to go toward the Lord, we have to engage in pure devotional service under the tutelage or under the supervision of a bona fide, pure devotee spiritual master. So those are all important points. And the last point she uh, refers to that has formed her uh, belief and faith in Krishna consciousness is this human form is specifically meant for reawakening that constitutional position and understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Very good point. That is our constitutional position, as she said in the previous verse, is we are the part and parcel of Krishna, and therefore we're meant to serve Krishna. And by serving Krishna, even after falling down from the spiritual world, we regain our spiritual uh, position and go back to Godhead again where we belong. Okay, and this verse, Srimad Bhagavatam 6.155, since the living entity is associated with material nature, he is in an awkward position, but if in the human form of life he is taught how to associate with the Supreme Personality of Godhead or his devotee, this position can be over. So very good, Shrestha. And that is, this is the main point one has to have the association of a genuine devotee. In order to understand the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavatam, the Bhagavad Gita correctly and become situated in pure devotional service by which one becomes liberated from the, the influence, uh, the conditioning influence of the modes of material nature, including the mundane material mode of goodness. And attain to transcendental goodness, which is that verse, Eitan, uh, the, the verse uh, 
1420. So when we transcend the influence of the most material nature, we begin to taste nectar. This amritam. Uh, we enjoy nectar. What is the nectar? The nectar of pure devotional service. And Prabhupada says in that Perth Board 1420, how can one stay in the transcendental position even in this body? In full Krishna consciousness, as explained in this verse, the Sanskrit word dehi means embodied, and although one is within the material body by his advancement in spiritual knowledge, he can be free from the influence of the modes of nature. Yeah, the body is under the influence of the modes of nature, but when we realize that I'm not this body, I'm an internal soul, my constitutional position is part and parcel of Krishna, and therefore I should be engaged in the service of Krishna because everything, the spiritual world, all living entities, which are marginal energy of the Lord, and the material world, which is separated inferior spiritual energy, are all part and parcel of the Lord. So there's no question of being independent or of the Lord or trying to enjoy uh, independent of him. It only gets us in the material nature of birth and death. Therefore, my real position is to serve Krishna. That's my constitutional position. My soul is made like that it's as being part and parcel of Krishna. Therefore, my real duty in life, my, the real occupational duty of my life is to serve Krishna. Although one is, in, is within this material body, by his advancement in spiritual knowledge, he can be free from the influence of the modes of nature. He can enjoy the happiness of spiritual life even in this body because after leaving this body, he is certainly going to the spiritual sky. But even in this body, he can enjoy spiritual happiness. In other words, devotional service in Krishna consciousness is the sign of liberation from material entanglement. And this will be explained in the 18th chapter when one is freed from the influence of the modes of material nature, he enters into devotional service. Okay, very good, Shrestha. Now she continues. The ultimate purport, so now she's writing. The ultimate purport to the points mentioned above is that we are completely dependent on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna. We must understand that we may temporarily lord it over the material nature and appear as if we are controllers but the fact is that the lord is the controller of everything and what we control as living entities is minute and limited it is natural therefore to embrace our subordinate position and serve the lord very good paragraph very good paragraph Shrestha. and then she says lord krishna being all merciful is not aloof to those who serve him with love and devotion yeah krishna cares for his devotee and give special attention. In fact, he is attracted to his pure devotees and reciprocates with them. This is mentioned in various places in the Vedic scriptures. So Bhagavad Gita 9.31 explains how the Lord protects the devotee. He quickly becomes, and she's quoting the verse, he quickly becomes righteous and attains lasting peace, O son of Kunti, declared boldly that my devotee never perishes. Shipam bhavati dharmat ma satsvats chantim negachyati kontea pratijani hi name bhakta pranasyati. Very nice verse. Nice quote by uh, Shrestha 931. Shipam bhavati dharmat ma satsvats chantim negachyati. Yes. So when we, uh, what, what do we do when we completely dedicate ourselves to Krishna. And that verse is yat karosi yadas nasi yadasi dadasi yad yat tapas yasi konte yad tat kurusva madarpanam 927 whatever you do whatever you eat whatever you offer or give away and whatever austerities and you perform do that O son of Kunti as an offering to me. Okay. And then next, Shrestha quotes 10.10. Bhagavad Gita 10.10 explains how the Lord gives knowledge and protection to
to those who are constantly devoted to serving me, Krishna says, with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. So, Tesam Satato Yuktanam Bajitam Priti Purvakam Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam Yenamam Upayantite. Very good verse. Krishna reveals knowledge, and real knowledge is revealed because it's already in our heart. We've experienced life so many times in different bodies, and we also experience being in the spiritual world, but we've forgotten it. But by Krishna consciousness, one can remember all these things, especially being with Krishna originally. And that's the mercy of Krishna who gives us that revealed knowledge, is knowledge by our surrender to the Lord. So it says, as one surrenders unto the Lord, as one surrenders to the Lord progressively, according to the surrender, the Lord reveals himself to the devotee. Okay, uh, so that's uh, just a few verses that would uh, fill out this. But then uh, Shrestha quotes 9.29, which is very important verse, that is that if one engages all their activities and their thoughts uh, that that is that uh, in their worship, etc, yet kurosi, nasi, whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you give away in, in or in charity and whatever austerities you perform, do it for me. Then Krishna says, if you do this, then you become free of bondage to work and, aus and auspicious and inauspicious results. And therefore, he says, Samaham Sarabhute Su Name Dveso Strina Priya. He says that uh, I'm not uh, partial to anyone. I'm not prejudiced. I'm equal to all. But whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend, is in me, and I am also a friend to him. In other words, he is going to give, he's equal to everyone, but he's going to give special attention to his devotee. So she quotes that verse. I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone. I am equal to all. But whoever renders service unto me in devotion as a friend is in me, and I am also a friend to him. Another very important verse. And then she finishes with 5-7, with, uh, which was a homework. And it says, Yoga Yukto Vasudatma Vijitatma Jitendriya Sarvabhutatma Bhutatma Kurvan Apina Lipyate, very important verse. And she says, 5 7 explains how the devotee is always favored because he is serving the Lord. And she quotes the verse 1 Who works in devotion, who is a pure soul, and who controls his mind and senses, is dear to everyone, and everyone is dear to him. Though always working, such a man is never entangled. Well, that's the whole point. If you engage in devotional service properly, you have only pure desires to please the Lord. And the Lord who's, who can, uh, and you control your mind and senses, then you become dear to everyone, and everyone is dear to you. And though working in so many different ways, such a person is never entangled by the, by the, uh, modes of material nature. So that is important because knowledge of Krishna depends in part on control of the mind, body, and senses by engaging them in devotional service. That's the way we control them. We don't control them artificially through meditation. But we control them by engaging them always in Krishna's service with the help and guidance of a bona, bona fide spiritual masters, Shiksha and Diksha Gurus. 
And then Arjuna, and let's see. Arjuna was an example of someone protected by the mercy of the Lord because the Lord promises to protect his duvuri. And then by always working in Krishna consciousness, uh, the devotee is never entangled, although he may perform seemingly horrible acts, just like Arjuna fought in the battle of Kurukshetra, killed so many people, including his guru, Dronacharya, one of his main gurus, and his uh, and the grand sire of the of the Guru dynasty, Bhisma Pitamaha, but yet he's honored uh, even today because he simply was following Krishna's orders. He was didn't make up anything himself. So now Shrestha says, from the various posts presented above, one can understand the devotional service. That devotional service, one, is the natural activity of living entity. Two, relieves one from material miseries. And most importantly, three, invokes the mercy and protection of the Lord. Therefore, devotional service is the most beneficial activity for the living entity. By realizing the importance of practic practicing bhakti yoga with faith, I have understood that my life should be aligned to allow me to constantly serve Lord Krishna. Excellent. And then she says, what is my life's goal? My life's goal is that I should always be engaged in devotional service and make that the highest priority of my life. Therefore, an ideal life for me would be to follow the saying, simple living and high thinking. That is, I should gradually reduce my material needs and dovetail my activities in the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then finally, how am I going to achieve my goal? I'm going to achieve my goal by sincerely practicing bhakti yoga. This means that, according to Bhagavad Gita 5.7, I will work towards controlling my mind and senses and offering the results of my activity service to the Lord. And in this manner, my activity in this manner, serve all living entities by serving the Supreme Lord. It is stated in the purport of 5.7 that such a person cannot think of any living being as separate from Krishna, just as the leaves and branches of a tree are not separate from the tree. He knows very well that by pouring water on the root of the tree, the water will be distributed to all the leaves and branches, or by supplying food to the stomach, the energy is automatically distributed throughout the body. The process to reach this stage is simple. There are four do's and don'ts, and there, there are four do's and there are four don'ts. If we abide by these principles carefully, we can serve the Lord with devotion. So. Uh, cleanliness, austerity, mercy, truthfulness. Well, those are the universal principles of spirituality. But the do's are always chant Hare Krishna and uh, study uh, or regularly hear and, and read uh, Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Eat only prasadam food offered to Krishna with love and devotion and come regularly to the temple and do devotional service in the association of devotees. Those are the four do's. And the don'ts are no meat eating, intoxication, illicit relationships, you say, outside of marriage and also inside of marriage. No uh, illicit activities and no gambling and speculation. And then finally she writes... So you can correct the four do's. What will I actually achieve in the end? Only if and when one practices bhakti yoga sincerely and with the discipline will one be able to experience its effects unlike the other practices of yoga. Bhakti yoga is so special because both the means and the goal are the same. The practice of bhakti yoga helps one achieve the highest goal, which is also bhakti yoga or love of Lord, a love of Godhead. Other side effects, such as transcendental pleasure and happiness, are described in the Nectar of Devotion, but it is also stated that the devotee is not even driven by such side effects. They are just so, because the devotee is so dedicated to the service of the Lord. This is explained by Srila Prabhupada in the purport to Bhagavad Gita 8.15. The Mahatmas receive transcendental messages from the realized devotees and thus gradually develop devotional service in Krishna consciousness and become so absorbed in transcendental service that they no longer desire elevation to any of the material planets. 
nor do they even want to be transferred to any spiritual planet. They only want Krishna and Krishna's association and nothing else. That is the highest perfection of life. This is an extremely elevated stage, but simply by making the endeavor and with Krishna, Lord's mercy, we can at all reach there at some point in time. Shrestha. Okay, very good, Shrestha. Thank you very much. Well done. We're out of time today because we're going to uh, honor His Holiness Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj. This is his appearance day, Yas Puja day. However, I'm going to give you homework for tomorrow, and that is I mentioned first canto, 15th chapter, 8th verse. And it talks about Maya Dhanava, the demon who was going to be killed by Krishna, but because he surrendered to Arjuna, Krishna uh, pulled back his weapon, the Sudasan Chakra fire weapon, and disc, uh, the, the uh, fire weapon disc, and uh, and uh, because Arjuna was so merciful. So now, the one point I thought Shastra could have mentioned, and I, and I saw the same thing in Augusta's homework, uh, not Sun, Sun Muk's homework, but Augusta's homework, he didn't mention, he might have mentioned tangentially, but not so directly, the importance of accepting the spiritual master and masters. So, I want you to study how the devotee is even more merciful than Krishna. And my hint to help you uh, explain this is you have the purport of 1, 15, 8. And also... Bhagavad Gita 2.45, purport, I mean, verse and purport, and also, uh, one second, So one is two point four five and Bhagavad Gita 3.29 and Bhagavad Gita 18.71 and Bhagavad Gita 11.55 where it says that a devotee is more merciful than the Lord and in devotional service, the mercy of a devotee is more valuable than the mercy of the Lord. So that's your homework for tomorrow. And I gave you the different references you can use to do that homework. Hari Bol. Are there any questions? So I didn't read Sunmuk's and Augustus' homework. I'm going to read Sunmuk's homework tomorrow. It was very good. Anything, Daniel?